My English name is Peter Stranglinglow. I was born in uh, September 24th, 1951. Uh, I was raised by uh, my grandparents, Albert and Mary Chief Cab. One day in the fall of 56, two RCMP police came by, took me, my two brothers, Francis and Ben, brought us out to St. Paul's Residential School on the Blood Reserve, just outside of Cartston. The ones that I met the first, my first day of school were Gerald Tailfeathers, people know him as Tiny, uh, Sheldon First Rider, he was a good friend. We're all in the same dorm. There was double bunks in there, one up on top, one on the bottom, and there's maybe 40 to 50 students in there. The priest that was, uh, was also the principal, his name is uh, Mr. DeWolf. There was teachers that were quite mean when it comes to the abuse. There was a lot of it from uh, the fellow students, especially the older ones. They really abused these younger people and it saddens me to think, think back about it. But I was okay. My mother was there. She, had, she lived right at the school, so I was, we were safe. Our dad had a house out in the country, but it wasn't ready yet. But he wanted us to go to St. Mary's School, the other school on the reserve there. And that's when I start, started getting some of the abuse that you hear of. The worst part of being in the school to begin with, from probably uh, the start of the school, was leaving your parents, leaving your care to, caregivers. That's something that, uh, that I always think of, is being taken away. And you, you don't like that. I dreaded going back. But I had to, it was the law. You either go to school or your parents can be charged and jailed. Any positive experiences, I guess, learning how to speak in better English, and it improves during the time you're there. I had to speak Blackfoot because of my grandparents to keep my language intact. So it is a privilege to be able to speak two languages. Whenever we had a chance to actually listen to a little, a small transistor radio, we'd be listening to music from rock, rock and roll music. You can start hearing the Beatles. My first introduction to guitar, I would say it was in residential school. We had a cousin, his name was Wayne Many Guns. He was a blind man from Sixka, related to my grandmother. Totally blind, but he knew how to play guitar. Nothing, nothing to do with rock music or country music. It was gospel music that we learned. I was really practicing. I used, used to be uh, practicing guitar. I used to uh, come into Lethbridge, go to a music land. There was a music store in town, and I'd buy the records of, of one particular song I like. And back then, the, the bands that were getting up there was the Creedence Clearwater Revival. And I'd follow the music on the, on the record over and over again till I felt that I could actually play that almost exactly the way it's, you hear it on a record. So my dad brought me into Cardston with the guitar. It had a case and everything. I brought it to the late uh, Chucky Blood. And when I got to his house, there happened to be music coming out from that. They were getting ready to play that night for a dance in Moses Lake. So I said, oh, what can you play? And I told him, well, I got sheet music. Can anybody sing these songs? So just in that one afternoon, we, we managed to learn about maybe 10 Creedence songs, the easy ones. And I went to play in the band that same night. We didn't even have PA speakers. We had a one big amp that we all plugged into. Nowadays we have, I've got all this equipment, thousands of dollars worth, but thinking back then, having just the one big amp, it was a good experience, learning experience. It was fun, it was fun.